Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway have been bullish on Apple stock for quite some time now. They first bought Apple all the way back in 2016. They started off by buying 0.18% of all of Apple's shares outstanding. However, this then increased to 5.89% of Apple's stock. This was partly on the back of buying more shares, but also partly on the back of Apple buying back some of its shares, thereby reducing the number of shares outstanding and increasing the percentage of holdings that Berkshire Hathaway had. However, despite this bullish stance, Berkshire Hathaway has now sold some 10 million shares of Apple stock, slightly reducing their shareholding. It took their shorting from 5.89% of Apple stock down to 5.82% of the shares. This then slightly increased back to 5.86% when Apple then bought back some more shares. Now this slight reduction might not sound like much, but it is interesting and it's noteworthy given how hyperbullish Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway had been about Apple shares in the past. Here for example is what Warren Buffett had said about Apple and about the benefits of those buybacks increasing Berkshire Hathaway's percentage holding of Apple stock. They shouldn't buy in their shares at all unless they think that they're selling for less than they're their worth. And if they are selling for less than their worth and they have the money and they don't see an acquisition that's even more attractive, they should buy in their shares. And I think that that's very, because I think it's extremely hard to find acquisitions that would be accretive to Apple that would be in the 50 or 100 billion or $200 billion range. You know, I'm delighted to see them repurchasing shares. We own, let's say we own 250 million or so shares. They have, I think, 4,923 million or something like that. If you, uh, and mentally, you can say we own 5% of it. But I figure, we, you know, with the passage of a little time, we may own 6 or 7% simply because they repurchase shares. And it, I find it, if you got an extraordinary product and ecosystem and there's lots to be done. I th love the idea of having our 5% or whatever it may be grow to 6 or 7% without us laying out a dime. I mean, it, uh, it's worked for us in many other situations. And they're not going to find 50 or $100 billion acquisitions that they can make it remotely a sensible price that really uh, become additive to that. And, they may, they may find it, who knows, but there certainly, as I look around the horizon, I don't see anything that would make a lot of sense for them uh, in terms of what they'd have to pay and what they would get. Whereas I do see a business that they know everything about and where they uh, uh, may or may not uh, be able to buy it at an attractive price when they repurchase their shares. That remains to be seen. The reason these companies are buying their stock is that, is that they're smart enough to know that it's better for them than anything else. That, that does not mean we approve of every buyback at all, though. I mean, we've seen... No, no, no. Yeah. I think some people just buy it to keep the stock up. And that, of course, is insane and immoral. But apart from that, it's fine. So what then has changed? Why is it that Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett had sold down some of their shares in Apple? Well, here we are crystal ball gazing. Notably, this recent sale was in the 13th filing as at the end of 2023. Things might have changed since then. For example, they might have bought some more shares in Apple. We don't know at this point. However, it does seem that they sold down some of their shares and it might have been that they have not gone and bought some more. And we can identify some possible reasons for why they might have done this. First, it might just have been that they were profit-taking, so to speak. Now, I don't generally like the phrase profit-taking, because oftentimes you need to be prospective. You need to look at what is going to happen in the future of stock. So, for example, if the stock has increased a lot, but you expect it to increase a lot more, then you would not necessarily engage in profit-taking, because in the future you will get some high returns. However, if you're slightly ambivalent about future returns, then you might take some of your profits off the table, maybe rebalance your portfolio. So in the case of Apple, its shares had increased some 41% since January 2023. That's an absolutely phenomenal increase over that time period, and it's significantly better than the S&P 500, for example. Therefore, they might have thought it was prudent to take some profits, particularly if they didn't think that Apple shares were going to keep increasing at quite that rate, and particularly if they thought there were going to be some other profitable opportunities for them over the next 12 months. Because Berkshire Hathaway, of course, is a long-term investor, 
and they aren't just going to go in and out of stocks on a short-term basis. Second, Berkshire Hathaway might have decided that they were comfortable holding around 6% of the shares. They didn't necessarily want to hold more of the stock. They didn't necessarily want to be hyper-concentrated. They didn't necessarily want to be the controlling shareholder. They were happy around that percentage shareholder. And therefore, they were going to keep their percentage at that level. Which means that as Apple was buying back stock, they might trim their hoarding a little bit. They might not trim back totally the amount of the increase they got from the buyback, but they'll trim back a little bit. For example, if Apple had then bought back some shares, thereby increasing Berkshire Hathaway's hoarding by 0.1%, they might sell 0.05%, slightly paring back the increase they would have otherwise gotten. In so doing, they might have slightly rebalancing their portfolio while maintaining a positive stance on Apple. And notably, they only sold 10 million shares. They own a lot of shares in Apple, and they still hold 5.86% of Apple shares outstanding. So this was only a slight rebalancing. They still appear to be reasonably positive about Apple stock. Maybe just slightly less positive than they were beforehand. So to put this in perspective, we can look at some of the analyst forecasts. Analysts are still reasonably bullish on Apple. They've been at about 9.5% upside over the next year, which is not terrible, but of course it's not necessarily brilliant per se. It is still growth expectation, but not necessarily a massive growth expectation. 58% of analysts are giving a buy recommendation on Apple. However, if we look a little bit closer, we can see what happened with Apple's stock price when Berkshire Hathaway seemingly sold their shares and what's happened since then. For example, toward the end of 2023, Apple's share price was surging. It's clear that Berkshire Hathaway trimmed their hoarding toward the end of 2023. They were trimming it as Apple's share price was reaching what the analyst 12-month forecast was going to be. That is, Berkshire Hathaway was trimming its hoarding as Apple's stock price was reaching the analyst forecast for the next 12 months. This could have been a prudent area to be trimming some of their holding, perhaps taking some of their profits off the table when Apple share price was reaching a high level and then slightly rebalancing the portfolio. But of course, if you're looking to get access to analyst consensus forecast for the S&P 500, well, premium subscribers to my newsletter can get access to that on a roughly fortnightly basis. Check that out in the link in the description below. Or you can sign up for a platform like Simply Wall Street, which I find incredibly useful, and they're periodically running discounts. Again, check that out using my affiliate link in the description below as well. And hopefully that's useful to you. But in any case, we're seeing Apple share price surging, but then also potentially facing some growth hurdles, potentially limiting its momentum over the next 12 months. For example, consumer and the tech sector appear to be struggling a little bit. The consumer appears to be struggling with continued goods expenditure on the back of high inflation, which has for the past 12 months or so really exceeded after-tax earnings increases, meaning spending power hasn't been brilliant. Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett, of course, do tend to shy away from picking macroeconomic trends. They try to pick stocks that will last for the long term in all economic environments. However, those macroeconomic trends will still influence firms, cash flows, and the risks, which are things that Berkshire Hathaway does care about, and therefore they will influence the investment decisions. So in the case of Apple, for example, they face growth headwinds. The consumer is stretched. High interest rates are cutting into disposable income. Consumers in general are struggling to keep up with the goods expenditure. Service expenditure might still be there in the form of rent and the like, but goods expenditure has struggled, particularly in the discretionary space. This, for example, has resulted in slightly disappointing sales for the iPhone 15, which reportedly sold some 4.5% less than the iPhone 14 did immediately after its launch. The consumer appears to be delaying their upgrade cycle because they don't necessarily need to upgrade quite as rapidly, and also because they don't feel as if they can afford to upgrade quite as rapidly, particularly when the offering isn't quite as compelling. Apple's VR headset appears not to have really generated significant hype or enthusiasm either. Furthermore, Apple's incursion into China appears to have hit some stumbling blocks. For example, there's been significant competition from Huawei, and consumers in China are also struggling. And China is struggling with deflation, both in CPI and in PPI, which means that Apple is going to struggle to continue to increase its market share and its growth in China at a massive level anyway, which means that while Apple might still be a good company, while Apple might still be generating good quality earnings, might still have a significant moat based on its ecosystem, 
the growth that Apple might generate over the next period might be less good than it had been, which means that Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett are want to slightly rebalance their portfolio. Hence why they're not continuing to increase their holding, but they're not dramatically pairing it back either. Rather, they're selling shares, partly offsetting the impact of the buybacks that Apple was engaging in. Hence why we've got this result that we've got in Berkshire Hathaway's latest 13F filing. At least that's my take on it. But if you've got any thoughts about what Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway are doing here, well, let me know that in the comments below. And otherwise, thanks a lot for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, and hopefully I see you next time as well.